Hello everyone, Metal Horror Gamer here, and today we are checking out some awesome games for the original Microsoft Xbox. There's always a common trend I see when it comes to videos about the original Microsoft Xbox and its games. For example, whenever there is like a must play original Xbox games or the top 10 best original Xbox games, it's usually common to see the last two places end up with Halo and Halo 2. Again, understandable, I get it. But I fear that because of this, a lot of people think that's all the original Xbox had to offer. And that's just not right. It had so much more to offer in terms of games besides Halo. And that's really what this video series is going to be about. I don't want to just always highlight Halo and Halo 2 when I'm talking about the Xbox. Because that's the problem. Because the original Xbox had a huge library of exclusives and the best looking multiplats to play of its generation. So since I love the console, I wanted to create a series that shows off all the other awesome games that you can play on the original Xbox that aren't Halo. Because in my opinion, the original Xbox deserved more credit and love because it was an amazing console during its day and it's still awesome now that's why i'm still playing it so for today's video i'm going to show off five random games from my library of 100 plus games that i think that are still fun to play on the original xbox and if there are any games specifically that you want to see on upcoming parts to this series just let me know in the comments and i'll do my best to showcase those games if i have them this series isn't just about showing off the games that I like, but rather a celebration of what the original Microsoft Xbox had to offer. So please recommend away in the comments. And please remember, once the video is over, leave a like or a dislike depending on what you thought of the video. Any and all constructor criticism is very useful to helping me grow my channel and continue to refine my video making abilities. If you want to talk or discuss the video, you can always leave me a comment. I always try my best to reply to every comment that comes in, but sometimes some slip through the cracks, so I'm sorry if that happens to your comment. If you do like what you see, by all means, subscribe and join my ever-growing legion. And also, if you want to do more chatting or just see what I'm up to, you can always follow me on Twitter. I'm usually always on there. It's strangely addictive. And one last side note, originally I was going to do 10 games an episode, but I realized it would take way too much time to do. I have to play and record all the gameplay, write down my script, record the audio, create the thumbnail and possibly more pictures on Photoshop, start editing, rendering, and then finally uploading the video. Usually one video takes me an entire day from start to finish and that's if everything goes smoothly. It could easily take two or three days and in between all that I have to work and take care of my daughters and spend time with my wife as well. So since my free time is very limited, I've decided to lighten the load. So I'm sorry, I'd rather show 10 games, an episode, but five will be much easier for me to handle and hopefully lead me to making more of these quicker in the process. But enough of all that shit, let's get to what I promised that this video would be about. Here are five awesome original Xbox games to play that aren't Halo. Number one, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Castlevania Curse of Darkness was released for the Xbox on November 1st, 2005 in North America. It was developed and published by Konami. Curse of Darkness was the fourth fully 3D Castlevania in the series. And while its first couple 3D games on the N64 were pretty lackluster and clunky, Konami started to get the feel for it when they released Castlevania Lament of Innocence for the PS2. And they continued to refine their gameplay and their craft with Curse of Darkness. Castlevania Curse of Darkness is a hack and slasher, just like its roots on the NES, but now in 3D. Now this is after DMC, but before God of War. So the gameplay hasn't been fully optimized to the level we would expect now in a game of this type, but by no means does it feel unplayable. While feeling a bit archaic at times, it does still offer that great fun hack and slash experience. And the graphics were very well done for the time. I've always loved the world of Castlevania. Seeing these gothic locations always puts me in the mood to kill vampires, demons, and whatever else wants to get their ass whipped. 
Combat seems repetitive at first, but you can do different style combos when you mix your normal attack with pressing the B button. And eventually, you're going to have to learn to do all this and learn how to dodge, because after a while, you have to fight a lot of enemies at once. But be warned, the combat isn't as polished or stylish as Devil May Cry, or as visceral as God of War. Now, if you go by the Castlevania timeline, Curse of Darkness is the third game in the series. It takes place after Lament of Innocence and Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. In this game, you don't use the Vampire Killer Whip, because you're not part of the Belmont clan. You play as Hector, a devil forge master. Now, a forge master is a human trained in the dark arts and has the ability to create and forge demonic creatures at will. If you watched season 2 of the Castlevania Netflix series, Hector should look very familiar to you. Hector had formerly worked in the service of Dracula, but eventually Hector became disgusted with Dracula and eventually left to live his life with humans. He eventually married a human wife, but she ends up being murdered by his fellow forge master, Isaac. The game starts with Hector traveling to Dracula's castle to kill Isaac in revenge, but I'd rather not say any more beyond that because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't played it yet. Now, in terms of gameplay, it might not be the most polished out of all the Castlevania games, but it does feel like a Castlevania game. Like in terms of being able to create weapons and armor and being able to level up your character and equip them with all this new gear. It, it's not like classic Castlevania, but it reminds me of moving on from Symphony of the Night and onwards. And being able to learn how to summon different demons with different abilities keeps the game feeling fresh. If there is one aspect that sort of bugs me, it's the music. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad or anything like that, because it fits quite nicely, and I really do like it. But I love the kind of music from the original games on the NES. So not having an awesome, lively soundtrack like that bugs me. But it is a personal preference. It may not bother you. I've just been spoiled by the NES soundtracks. Overall... Curse of Darkness is a solid Castlevania game that will give you your fill of gothic art and hack and slash gameplay, and it's most definitely worth the play today. And I've also heard that the Xbox version has faster load times. Now I don't have the PS2 version, so I can't speak on how quickly it loads, but I can say the Xbox loads very quickly. Number 2. The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age Now, The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age was released for the Xbox on November 2nd, 2004 in North America. It was developed by EA Redwood Shores and published by EA. The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age is what you get when you take The Lord of the Rings lore and the classic combat from JRPGs like Final Fantasy. Mix it together and you have a game that is criminally underrated, but loads of fun. I loved the world of Lord of the Rings. And when I heard there was an RPG with Final Fantasy style combat, I was sold instantly. The game is meant to be canonical to the films. And it even runs parallel with the films at points. Like for example, there is an awesome part where you are inside the mines of Moria and you can hear Gandalf and the rest of the Fellowship fighting. That's such a nice touch. Sometimes you reach some areas from the movie and the game shows you a clip from the films with Gandalf speaking to your party, letting you know that, that their fellowship was just there. You know, they just had to slip in scenes from the films into the game. They always did this kind of thing back then. In the game, you have six playable characters that will join you in your party. And I won't even attempt to say their names because I know I would butcher all of their names horribly. The party consists of four humans, one elf, and one dwarf, and they each have their own strengths and weaknesses and skills like you would expect from any RPG. Most reviewers at the time compared the combat to Final Fantasy X, and they looked down on it for that, but others like myself loved it for that exact reason. Many reviewers at the time claimed it had a weak story, and something like that can just kill an RPG. I can't speak on that myself because I haven't finished the game yet. But for me, I really don't care. The lore and the combat kept me playing. The voice acting is surprisingly good. 
The music isn't anywhere near as good as what I would expect from games like Final Fantasy, but I wasn't really expecting it to be anyways. But as a plus, the game is filled with the amazing soundtrack from the films. So, there's that. The graphics are good. Not amazing, but it gets the job done. It's not the most in-depth RPG I have ever played when it comes to mechanics, but if you never played any games of this style, this could be a good starting point for those who are intimidated by that classic JRPG style. There is one aspect I really like here that a lot of classic JRPGs didn't do, was when you equip a new weapon or armor, it actually shows on your character. And upgrading your characters and equipping them with new weapons and armor is very simple and straightforward. The game makes sure you know what to do without feeling super handholdy. Overall, the game was never designed to be a huge epic RPG adventure like Final Fantasy X. EA had the rights to make games from Lord of the Rings films, and it probably wanted to make some extra cash from fans that loved Final Fantasy X. It was most likely greenlit to fill up an empty spot in their release cycle. But I'm sure glad they did it, because it's a really fun game. While recording the gameplay for the video, I honestly did not want to stop playing. It sucked me in instantly. And there is one feature that the game has that I personally haven't tried yet, and that's co-op. So if you're tired of playing by yourself, you can always have someone join in on the fun. And isn't that always better? Not sure how the game pulls it off, but, you know, it's there. But for what it is, I think it's a very fun game and worth checking out if you like The Lord of the Rings and miss games with that classic Final Fantasy style combat. Now, it's not going to blow you away, but if you're delving deeper into the original Xbox games, this is a fun one to play. At least it was for me. Number 3, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was released for the Xbox on March 27, 2003 in North America. It was developed and published by Capcom. Now what can I really say about Marvel vs. Capcom 2 that hasn't already been said before? Everyone knows it's an amazing fighting game with gorgeous 2D sprites equipped with a fast and frantic gameplay and is equipped with the world's most annoying screen selection music. Yes, I said it. If I have to be honest, in general, I hate the music in this game. Pretty much all of it. None of it fits. I don't know why they chose this soundtrack for this game. It just, it just does not work in my opinion. And personally, I don't care for the for some of the 3D backgrounds. Some don't look too bad, but other ones look very cheap. But it was still early technology, so I can give them a pass on it, but I'm not a big fan of the, the way it looks. But luckily, everything else is damn near perfect. As the name suggests, you get to choose from a, a huge roster of about 56 characters from Marvel Comics and Capcom's video games. I don't think any other fighting game can ever compare with its roster. It's legendary. It's so good that when the rosters were revealed for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it looked like such a downgrade. As far as ports go, it's pretty damn good. But in this generation, everyone knows the best version is on the Dreamcast. But for the casual gamer, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Xbox is gonna look and play damn near arcade perfect. I honestly wouldn't even worry about it unless you are that type of person that gives a shit about that. The game is a bit pricey now, but damn does it look good in my Xbox collection. A must play game on any system, but if you have the original Xbox, you can't go wrong here. Yeah. 
number four, NHL Hits 2002. NHL Hits 2002 was released on the Xbox on November 14th, 2001 in North America. It was developed by Black Box Games and published by Midway Games. Yes, we are looking at a sports game, but this is not a simulation, but rather an NHL game that feels very arcadey, which is awesome because even if you don't watch the sport or know any of the rules, it does not matter. You're going to have fun with this fast, hard-hitting arcade hockey action. You play a 3v3 game with three extra players on the bench. With so few players, there is a lot of extra room on the ice to lay big time hits. One aspect of hockey that is awesome is the fighting that takes place. And here it works a bit differently. Instead of both players going to the penalty boxes after a fight, the player who loses the fight is kicked out of the game permanently like damn. Now you only have a total of six players on your team. So you are only allowed to lose three. Once you lose three players, there are no more fights allowed for the rest of the match. Hockey has always been known for the big hits, which is why Hall of Famer Scott Stevens is on the cover. He was known for laying the big hits. Like, damn. If you watch any highlight videos of big hits, you're going to see Scott Stevens, and those hits are going to fucking scare you. That dude was a fucking beast. But no matter how big the hits are, you will not be penalized. Hitting is encouraged, and these hits are fucking awesome. You are able to knock players over the boards and through the glass temporarily, removing them from play. It sort of plays like NBA Jam, in a way. If a player scores three goals in one game, that player becomes on fire, making them stronger and are now equipped with more powerful shots. If you are able to score three unanswered goals in a row, the whole team will be on fire. One aspect that does suck is that there's no season mode, which to me, that should be a requirement. How can you not have a season mode? But sadly, it's not here. But there are a ton of unlockables like stadiums and jerseys and much more silly shit like that. Seriously, you need to play this game. I don't care if you don't like sports or hockey. This is a fun game. NHL hockey mixed with arcade action is a win-win in my book. Kachuk in all alone. Kachuk is denied by Belfour. A blistering shot. The shot blocked. Big hit by Hatcher. Zubo. It went in. The Stars decided they'd like another goal. Go. He's pass back. Zubo shoots the puck. Young. Now to meet Brent. The shot stopped by Belfour. The game is over. The Stars have won against the Blues. Thank you for playing the coolest game on earth, NHL Hits. Number 5, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith was released for the Xbox on May 4th, 2005 in North America. It was developed by The Collective and published by LucasArts. I'm just going to say it now, in my opinion, this game is better than the movie. Yeah. I said it. While some parts of the film that should have been awesome weren't shown or quickly passed by are corrected by this game. For starters, we actually get to play as Anakin when he turns to the dark side and attacks the Jedi Temple, killing all the Jedi inside. Why wasn't that in the film? That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see Lord Vader hunt down the Jedis and it just skipped through it. Lame. We also get to have a fight with Mace Windu instead of just chopping off his arm and frying his ass. This game feels like a director's cut version of a film. All the awesome stuff we wanted from the film was inserted into this game. Now graphics are nothing to write home about, but, it, but for its time it was very passable. Gameplay is very linear, but that's common for movie adaptations. You can upgrade Anakin or Obi-Wan in a few ways, and while not in depth, it gets the job done, which again, is very common for movie adaptations. You can actually beat the game rather quickly, but for me this is still a very entertaining game. I remember the first time I played it and I was like, why was this so much better than the movie? 
Now, voice acting is okay, but again, it's not, it's not amazing by any means. It's just, it's solid. Overall, it's your typical movie adaptation. And of course, when it comes to the soundtrack, you know what to expect. It's going to be the music from the films, which, luckily for us, is some damn good music. So there's no problem with that. Now, there is one thing this game does that many games did back then, as I mentioned earlier in the video. There are clips from the film in the game and the case even points that out because back then believe it or not that used to be a selling point for games not so much now but back then it really was a thing but either way i love this game and i think it's worth the playthrough your favorite student is no more You'll have to be faster than that. So that's all for the first episode in this series of five awesome original Xbox games to play that aren't Halo. Let me know what you think of these five games. Did you play them or are you interested to give them a chance now? Let me know in the comments and while you're at it, you can always recommend specific games that you want to be shown in future episodes. That's all for now. Hopefully I will be back soon with another video showing off another five original Xbox games. I hope you enjoyed it and as always stay safe out there and keep on gaming gamers.